Of all the things you ever found out about your parents, what shocked you the most? The fact my abusive dad was a coward. One of his old navy buddies told me a story about how my dad was the Frank Burns of the outfit, and was routinely turned down for promotion because he had terrible social skills, was untrustworthy, and a backstabber. In fact, when he found out he was turned down again, he petitioned that his rather well-liked commanding officer was unfit for command and demanded a court-martial. It's amazing no one shot him in the back and he got lost at sea, the guy told me. They sent him stateside where he finished his term as a paper pusher because they considered him mentally unsuitable for long voyages. My father was an electronics engineer with a PhD. According to a few people, my dad took this up so that he could get money from government contracts, which did seem to work out rather well. But when I was a kid, I didn't understand why my dad never had any of the modern gadgets in the house, and why I was not allowed to have a home computer. I mean, he wasn't a Luddite. But in the 1980s, we didn't have a microwave, modern TV, cable, modern stereo, video games, VCR, or computer when a lot of my friends had them. My mother said, he works with computers all day, he doesn't want to come home to them. Later I found out my dad hates electronics. In fact, he despises computers. Last time I spoke with him, he said his work made him get a laptop. I asked him what kind, as my work gave me a Toshiba Techa. Dates this story, they were new, and it was awful. He got angry and refused to answer me. I tried to bond with him on some electronic computer nerd level but he just grew furious until I dropped the subject. Later I found out he won't even check his email. His wife does it for him. Guy's got a PhD in EE, was once VP of the IEE chapter here, and he hates computers. This with the other info made me realize that my dad was not this uber genius I grew up thinking he was, but one of the paper tigers I despise working with now in my contract work. This helped me heal immensely, not because I was better than him, but it took away that whole feeling of maybe I am the dumb one, and understood him from a management point of view. It took away his power over me. Of course, it would be interesting to see how this pans out should I ever meet him again. I haven't seen him in 13 years. Ro, your dad is a sad, sad man. They had a child two years before I was born. Mom was a RHS sophomore. Dad a junior. She was given up for adoption. Two years later, at mom's senior prom, I was conceived. Mom and dad got married, had two more kids. Never, ever mentioned the firstborn. Mom told us about it on her deathbed. Mystery sister is now part of the family. Weird and abnormal, but part of the family. It'll be weirder if you later try to search for her and found out that she's one of the girl you've slept with before. The sheer amount of drugs they did without anyone noticing. My mother had a stable job, even. It seemed like we were just a normal poor family. They managed money well enough that they could still pay for everything necessary and have their drugs anyway. And then, when it came down to the wire, they quit through sheer force of will. One quit M and cigarettes cold turkey simultaneously. I found this out when I was in middle school. Overall, that's probably a motivational story. If you can quit M and cigarettes cold turkey simultaneously, you can probably accomplish just about anything. My mom has a glass eye. Not a big deal as far as revelations go. Except that it wasn't revealed to me. I was 13 when I was looking for a pen and found my mom's box of eyes. Staring back at me. A conversation went something like this. Me. A A A A A H. W T F the heck eyes what is this? Dad. Those? Oh. Yeah. Those are your moms. She has a glass eye. Didn't you know? Mom. Yeah. Son. It's pretty obvious. Me. Whatever I don't suspiciously check people's eyes to see if their glass a a a a h i t touched me. Sounds like you might be slightly developmentally challenged. I learned that my father once jumped from the bed of one pickup truck to another, while they were going down the highway, clutching a gallon of vodka in one hand and a gallon of orange juice in the other. Now that is the definition of badass. I have never commented, but here is my story. When I was around 14 years old I used Yahoo Messenger as my default chat client. I got onto our family computer one day, and assumed that it was my it logged in. I wanted to print out some chat history from the night before, and when I looked I realized it was my mother's chat history. I was obviously curious, 
and noticed a conversation she had with my uncle, her brother-in-law. He basically was asking her, when's the next time we're going to have sex, and that my aunt isn't putting out lately, crap like that. She was teasing him like a teenager would, pretty disturbing. I would have let it go and just been like frick it, but only if this next situation didn't happen. This is the mind frick here. About 6 months later I go to the family computer early in the morning, and turn it on. After turning it on, something starts printing from the printer. I think how it printed was that it was in the print queue when the computer was shut off, and it stayed there until I turned it on. I grab what printed, and it's a page of 6 photos. Using the multiple page print feature of my mom fricking my uncle. Various positions, what not. I freak the frick out, and shove that photo deep into the trash can. As far as I can fricking push it. After a couple days, I begin to wonder, who took those photos? I remember the timestamps being close to one another, and the positions of the photos being in different areas, so not automatic camera. By the way, I thought it was just normal pee for a second and was checking it out until I realized what it was my mom. Anyway, after wondering who took the photos I barely was able to shrug it off. I then needed to use my dad's digital camera to take some photos for an ebay auction. I was looking through the photos out of curiosity because they had some vacation photos on them. Turns out, my dad was taking the sex photos of my mom and my uncle. Super freak out ensues. I tell my cousin, more going WTF. I've never told anyone other than my cousin, uncle's son, and have it in my pocket for a day when I really need some leverage, will never use it. I should mention that my cousin and I look very much alike. Creepily so, I will always wonder. This is one of few stories about my parents. Right after my dad died, I learned from my mom, his ex-wife, that the day before he was scheduled to be shipped back home from Saudi Arabia, he was in the marines in Desert Storm. His best friend was shot and killed literally two feet in front of him. Never knew that, and I wish I had, because it explains the old drinking. My mother told me that my grandfather almost killed my dad when he was dating her. He apparently offered my grandfather some chewing gum. For him that was a big insult. He was a very old fashioned and strict grandfather, so he stormed off and went to get his shotgun. My father had to run as quickly as he could, and my grandfather actually fired a shot but missed. I have many crazy stories about my grandfather. Edit. Here are some stories about him. He had a radio that nobody was allowed to touch, it was always tuned on the same station all day. So my mother and her siblings used to change the station when he wasn't home. But they had to tune the same station before he got back. They would usually forget this, and when my grandfather came home and found out that someone had messed with his radio, he would usually shoot the radio with his shotgun and buy a new one. I'm not making this up, my grandmother used to tell me this as well. Once he got into a big fight with my uncle, they were watching TV. My uncle had saved a lot of money to buy his first black and white TV. And my grandfather got pee off because he wanted to listen to his radio. He decided that if he couldn't listen to his radio then nobody would have entertainment that evening. According to my grandmother, he grabbed his shotgun and shot the distribution board so that nobody had access to electricity for one week. Another story that my grandmother and several older people from the village where I grew up tell me is that when he was younger, around 20 years old, his brothers and my grandfather thought that there was a treasure buried in the center of the village. Because his family was quite big, he had around 10 siblings. They managed to cut all the roads and access to the village's center in order to dig and search for the treasure. Several siblings guarded the place with guns and didn't allow anyone to go there. Not even people that lived in there. They found nothing and one of the brothers was killed when someone that lived in a house near the center stabbed him because they didn't let him go to his place. He hate religion and used to scare herds of pigs into going inside the church on Sundays, when everyone was attending the Sunday mass. Man. I really have to ask my relatives for more stories. I love how his solution to everything seems to be grabbing his shotgun. Okay, this is a long story. When my parents were first married in the late 60s, my dad went to Vietnam and came back in relatively one piece. He was stationed in San Diego, CA and they only had one car. Whenever he went to work my mom would take him and when he came home, she would pick him up. My father had always told her to pick up the soldiers at the give a sailor a ride location since the base was so big. 
She was nervous about this since she was from rural Oklahoma and came from a town that graduated only 14 in her senior class. Fast forward to the Marine Corps birthday and President Johnson is coming to make a speech. My mom is on her way to the base and picks up a large man in a black coat with red sleeves at a sailor ride point and drives with him onto base. The man was very drunk and made my country mouse type mom really nervous. She let him off at a major intersection with a share a ride place on base knowing he would quickly find a new ride and went on to get my father. When she gets to the parking lot, her car is surrounded by teenagers carrying automatic rifles screaming at her to get out and get down. She doesn't understand what is going on, thinks their new car is going to get scratched and all the hubbub someone else is causing and tries to get out of there. The SP surround car, yank the door open and drag her out into a car and go and interrogate her, asking her over and over again about the guy in black and red. Military rules are different than anything she is used to. She can't talk to my dad, can't talk to her dad and so on. They keep her there for 16 hours and finally let her go believing her story after much investigation with her friends around base, her work and her family. It turns out the douche gave a ride was drunk in a navy bar off base, said he was going to kill the president at the speech in the morning. It was reported to the authorities while he was in transit in the base guys said a guy with a black jacket and red sleeves just went through the gate with his girlfriend. My mom never gave a sailor a ride again and my dad never said a word about again. But somewhere in a government file, my timid country mouse mom has been investigated in a plot to kill a sitting American president. To her crete, it was Johnson. I asked my mom once if she went to any concerts when she was younger. She said not really, but a guy once invited her to a show at the Fillmore in San Francisco in 1968. She said she only went because she liked the guy, but left early because it was too loud and smoky. When I asked her what band it was she said, Oh, it was that band that sang hello I love you won't you tell me your name. Fasapum. I found out that my mom's dad, my grandfather, was once a very successful clown. Way back in the day he was offered a job of Bozo the Clown but turned it down. I'm a little bit glad he didn't because being redheaded the sedent of Bozo the Clown would have given me a whole different life than I have now. The fact that my mom left my dad not because it didn't work out but because he was a coke addict who always threw crazy parties while I slept in my crib. My mother was pregnant when her and my dad met. After dating for only a few weeks she lost the baby. My dad sold his car to pay for her medical bills. That my dad had another younger brother but he drowned when he was around 13 or 14. Only heard it from my mom and have never heard my dad mentioned it before. My mom apparently had a stepbrother that got electrocuted when a lamp fell on his head. He was found the next day by my grandpa. This too is never talked about. My dad very recently told me that him and his friends drove a minecart locomotive off the end of the track into a 500 featuring deep gorge like the end of Back to the Future 3. That and they blew up a house with abandoned dynamite. My mother told me recently she never believed dinosaurs were real until 6 years ago. She's not remotely religious. I had no response to this. Even religious nuts believe dinosaurs are real. They just don't believe they're as old as so-called scientists say they are. When I was in early elementary school, I found my parents' electric back massager. I used to give myself shoulder massages and when nobody was around, I used it on my penis. I was too young for ejaculating, but I did learn about orgasms. Anyway, I later realized that my parents used sex toys and I used the same one on myself. Dude gross. When I was 17, on the way to Christmas dinner, my mother started gasping while we were driving down the highway at 120-130 km per hour. I thought she might be having a heart attack, so I said are you okay she stopped gasping, looked at me, and said, sorry, acid flashback. I found out yesterday that my mother got pregnant when she was 14, long before I came along. Her parents forced her to go to one of those homes where they used to send the pregnant teens they were ashamed of. She was there until she had the baby at which point it was immediately taken from her by the doctors and given up for adoption. So I have a half sibling out there somewhere. Her parents church later made her stand before the congregation and apologize. I finally understand why she always says churchgoers are hypocrites even though she is religious. 
I recently learned that when I was less than a year old my mom came home from somewhere and found my dad and the neighbor's wife high as frick and skinny dipping in the pool out back. They almost got divorced, but he convinced her nothing happened. My dad is pretty straight laced, and if you knew him you would never think he had it in him to do something like that. They used to go out sailing to islands with nothing but a cooler of food and a cooler of alcohol. They came back only when the alcohol ran out and caught fish when they ran out of food. Went to stay at my dad's new place when I was 10. He came into the living room to sit down. He looked really ill and was not responding to my questions. I thought he was having a heart attack. Turns out he was high on hurrying. First of many times I would see him in the state. Nothing has ever shocked me about him since. There's a rumor in my family that my mom slept with my uncle, her brother, and I'm too scared to ask if it's true. Colon. Adds to the list of fricked up things that happened in our family we never talk about. Freaking Lannisters. When I came back from college, suddenly they were swearing up a storm around me. I suddenly resented them for washing my mouth out with soap as a kid for words I didn't even understand were wrong. My parents broke up because of my dad's alcoholism when I was one or two. My mum was freaking some other guy for a while, and my dad was in military rehab. When he got out I was calling this other guy daddy. He told me this while crying one night after him and my mum had a big fight about the past a couple of years ago. They've been together for 25 years and I never knew. My heart broke. My dad is my dad and he's wonderful. I wish I could go back and never call anyone else dad. I found out that my mother has an ex-husband, who is Chinese. I had never heard anything about any other marriages of hers until I was 20. It was weird as frick. She always said she moved from home, met my dad, and that was it. Also, I found out my dad had a few years of homosexuality. I basically don't know my parents. I actually found this out last week. My dad died when I was 9 and I never really got to know him. I was asking my mom about it last week and she decided I was old enough to hear the truth. Turns out he was a big time drug addict, like big time. It took over his life and led to his heart attack. The craziest thing she said is that during a detox he went so insane they admitted him to a mental hospital. He was put in a padded room with a straitjacket. Pretty nuts. My mother tells me things like, when I was a little girl we had a dog, and my car broke and a nice Chinese man helped me. She never told me she's been to Israel. She's worked overseas as an orangle picker. She wore men's clothing in her youth. Controversial back then. I was looking through the family camcorder when I was about 12 or 13, and found a video of my dad and godfather having a threesome with my Asian babysitter. I've posted this before, but here goes. Dad cheated on mum with my then girlfriend, almost as shocking, for me, anyway, is that she forgave him a few months later and they're still together. I still can't talk to him. When I was on the phone to mum yesterday he walked in and shouted hi, noid. I just wish he'd learn to shut the frick up and leave me alone. Can't deal with it. I feel you mate. Even though this will never be read, my mother and father had me and my sister. Then my father had his sex change and my mother had her sex change. Found out when I saw their passports when I was 17. They are still together true love? Yes. Wow oh oh. Just wow. That my dad was the largest dealer of C in Des Moines. I ate during the late 70s and 80s. Also, that he grows his own weed in his backyard. During the Vietnam War, my family was a prominent Boy Scout family. I guess Boy Scouting meant something different in Vietnam because my dad and uncles, that were under 18 and not fighting, went out every night to pick up pieces and bury the dead and carry out the wounded. They were allowed on both sides of the line as the NVA and US allowed them back and forth to wheel out the dead. As I was growing up, every so often I would hear my dad scream out at night. Turns out, he remembers the face of every person he buried the screaming used to scare and annoy me. But now that I know, I have nothing but deep respect for what he did as a teenager. My dad told me about 6 months ago that when he was in his 20s he used to own his own call service and on top of that was selling 100 pounds of weed and a pound of coke each week making $10,000 a week. This was in the late 70s. I asked him why he stopped and he said I quit when my partner got murdered execution style in our house. He said it with the straightest face. 
WTF. My parents always told us that dad proposed at a movie theater. He put the ring in the prize packet in a box of Cracker Jacks. What they neglected to tell us until recently was that the movie was a porno version of Cinderella. They are uber conservative Catholics now. Found out my dad and his family were saved from being lynched by an Arab mob in the Farhad, pro-Nazi Iraqis. On the year 41 at the age of 2, their Arab neighbors saved them while risking their own life of course. Many Jews died in the Farhad. If ever I see anyone being lynched I will do my best to rescue. Shalom salam peace amen. Wow that's quite a story. My father has been married two times already. Mom is his third. And he has two other daughters that are almost twice my age. Found this out last week. 22 years of lies. My dad was 53 years old when I was born. He had been married once before and had adult children who I knew. 30 years older than me. And I always thought it was weird that they knew and visited my grandparents. I never really connected that they were my siblings until I was about 11. Which caused a woe moment for me. Well, I'm late to the party. So this will be buried. A few years ago I found out that my parents met in a mental hospital. As in, my mom was a patient there and my dad was a psychologist. She'd had a psychotic break. He vowed to take care of her, etc. She also never wanted kids, but my dad really did, and he talked her into it. Explains a lot about my childhood, really. My dad was in mental hospitals 40 plus times, all against his will. He was able to leave pretty much whenever he wanted to, every single time, just by making friends with the staff. That the reason my parents split was because my mom had been cheating on my dad with one of her best friends who had become almost like an uncle to me. I know it doesn't sound like that big a deal, but I never really questioned why they got divorced, seeing as they were never very loving to each other. I just assumed they got sick of each other. Tears came to my eyes when my dad told me what happened, and my mom confirmed it a few weeks later in a completely unrelated conversation. My mother told me she dropped acid while pregnant with me, and that my dad had a huge dong. We were both drunk. Thanks ma. Found out my mom got fricked by Tommy Lee and Vince Neil of Motley Crue simultaneously in 1984 I never asked her about it but her friend gave up the bad cheddar. Just recently found out that my dad, a professional grad student for many years, used to regularly go to strip clubs during the day while my mom was at work, like, for years, and that my mom found out and made him stop. My dad's so quiet and polite, so it was really a shocker. I'm sure he was a favorite. He was probably the quiet guy who comes in around noon and stays for an hour or two. Maybe he's like Tracy Jordan. He doesn't mess around with them. He just tries to get them into computer classes. You don't have to live your life like this. My dad studied in the US. On a Fulbright scholarship. Both his parents died by the time he was 20 and he had to look after his three younger siblings in a poor developing country. Which just compounds the fuuk factor to me. That my dad, who is now a lawyer and president of my state's bar association, put himself through a law school by working as a smoke jumper during the summers in Utah. Smoke jumpers essentially jump out of a plane into forest fires and fight their way out. My dad is a badass. In high school I found out that my dad and his brother had a really fricked up, neglectful childhood complete with mentally ill mom, overworked, often absent dad, and lots of hunger, dirt, lying, and one instance of child abduction by his mom. I found this out over the course of about 6 months while their mom my grandma was dying of cancer in the next room. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.